An angle is formed by rotating a ray about its endpoint. The initial position of the ray is called the initial side of the angle. The final position of the ray is called the terminal side of the angle. The point at which the ray is rotated is called the vertex of the angle. Okay, if the angle is formed by rotating the ray in the counterclockwise direction, the angle is said to have positive measure. If instead the angle is formed by rotating the ray clockwise, then the angle is said to have negative measure. If the angle is positioned so that the vertex is at the origin, and the initial side corresponds with the positive x-axis, then the angle is said to be in standard position. Okay, so vertex is at the origin, and initial side is on the positive x-axis. Here are some approximate angles. Okay, so I took the ray and rotated it in the counterclockwise direction by about 50 degrees, so this is going to be a 50 degree angle. In this case, the ray was rotated in the clockwise direction. Okay, so this angle has a measure of negative 91 degrees. This angle here has a measure of about 150 degrees. Okay, so if you rotate it one full circle, in which case the initial side corresponds with the terminal side, then you go through 360 degrees. Okay, there are a few special types of angles. The first is called a right angle. Okay, a right angle is a 90 degree angle. An acute angle is an angle whose measure is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. A straight angle is an angle that is 180 degrees. And an obtuse angle is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, angles with the same initial side and terminal side are called coterminal angles. An example of two coterminal angles are 90 degrees and neg negative 270 degrees. 90 degrees is this angle right here. Okay, we start at the positive x-axis and rotate to the positive y-axis. So this is the initial side of the 90 degree, and this is the terminal side of the 90 degree angle. The negative 270 degree angle starts here, and then we rotate it counter, we rotate it clockwise to get to here. Okay, so this is the 270 degree angle, that's its terminal side, and it meets up with the terminal side of the 90 degree angle. Okay, the two angles 150 degrees and negative 210 degrees are also coterminal. Let's see that. Okay, the angle 150 degrees is somewhere around here, so we go to 90 degrees, and then it's just 30 degrees shy of 180. So 150 degrees is somewhere right around there. Okay, negative 210 degrees starts here on the positive x-axis, and we rotate clockwise through 180 degrees, and then 30 more degrees. So 210 degrees sorry, negative 210 degrees is this angle right here. Okay, so same terminal side and same initial side. Okay, pause for a second and think about this problem. Find an angle that is coterminal with the angle 30 degrees. Okay, there are infinitely many possibilities. One of them is the angle negative 330 degrees. Okay, so far I've only been talking about degrees when I've been talking about the um, unit for the, for the measure of an angle. There are other units that you can use to measure angles. Two examples are minutes and seconds. One minute is equal to one sixtieth of a degree. So it's written with a one and then a little um, apostrophe up there. One second is equal to one thirty-six hundredth 
of a degree, and that's written with a one and two little apostrophes up there. Another unit of measure for angles is called a radian. Okay, 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. So if we want to convert 360 degrees to radians, well, there, 360 degrees is 2 times 180, so that means 360 degrees is 2 times pi radians. Um, also, 90 degrees, well, 90 degrees is half of 180 degrees, so that means it's half of pi radians, or pi over 2 radians. Okay, more generally, to convert to radian measure, we take the number of degrees divided by 180 and then multiply it by pi. Or, you, or we can just think of it as the number of degrees times pi over 180. Okay, let's convert 45 degrees to radians. So what we do is we take the number of degrees and we multiply that by pi over 180. Okay, so 45 goes into 180 four times. So 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4 radians. Okay, let me give you a couple to try. Okay, press pause while you convert these two to radians. Okay, for the first one, you should have gotten pi over 6 radians. So 30 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. 30 goes into 80, I'm sorry, 30 goes into 180 six times. Okay, so we get pi divided by 6. In this case, 90 goes into 270 three times, and it goes into 180 two times. So we get 3 times pi divided by 2. So 270 degrees is equivalent to 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay, suppose we want to convert from radians to degrees. All we have to do is work backwards. So the number of degrees is equal to the number of radians times 180 divided by pi. Okay, let's do an example there. Okay, so we take 3 pi over 4 and multiply that by 180 over pi. So we see that the pi's cancel and 4 goes in 180 45 times. So we have 1's left in the bottom. 3 times 45 is 135. So we get 135 degrees. Okay, so 3 pi over 4 is equivalent to 135 degrees. Okay, let me give you a couple to try. Press pause while you work on these two. Okay, for the first one, you should have gotten 60 degrees, because pi over 3 times 180 pi over pi, the pi's cancel, and 3 goes into 180 60 times. So we have 1 times 60 over 1 times 1, and that gives us 60 degrees. And for the next one, you should have gotten 150 degrees. So we have 5 pi over 6 times 180 degrees over pi. The 6 goes into 180 30 times, and the pi's cancel. So we have 5 in this numerator times 30 in this numerator, which gives us 150, and we have 1 in both denominators. Okay, so we have 150 over 1, or 150.